Hello and good morning everyone. First of all, uh, I would like to thank you for tuning into our webinar for today. So uh, for today will be, uh, the webinar is, the title is Area Survey and Physical Mapping. And uh, uh, we hope all of you are staying safe and doing well there. Before we start, um, let me introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Tengku Afik, I will be the moderator for today. And together with me uh, today is Jayang from Chess Team. Uh, Jayang will be presenting and uh, speaking about area mapping and precision survey. And also not to forget a few of uh, our team from Poladron. So before uh, I pass the mic to Jayang, uh, feel free to ask any questions inside uh, as we go throughout the webinar using the chat box on the right hand screen of uh, the right hand side of the screen. So uh, me, Chia Yang, and also a few of our teams on the ground will uh, answer your questions as we go throughout the webinar. So without further ado, uh, I would like Chia to take up the floor and start our webinar for today. Chia Yang. Uh, all right. Uh, thank you, Afik. Thanks, uh, Afik, for the introduction. So uh, good morning, all. So today I will be the presenter for today's webinar. Uh, so my name is Jayang, so I'm coming from the sales team. So uh, today we're going to talk about the precision mapping and, uh, and area survey. So let's start with our first slide. <clears throat> yeah, so, uh, so for today, uh, our agenda will be have uh, four parts. So basically, uh, at first I will do some introductions to the UAV for those uh, are very new to drones and don't know what is uh, UAV. So later I will talk further about it, uh, how it works and how we can use drone to do more things. Then after that, I will talk the second part about drone survey, how to use drone in survey and also the applications for survey mapping. And then the last part uh, I'm gonna talk about is the service. So service basically are we talking about what kind of service we are providing and how we can assist uh, our clients or you guys to to do the things in survey mapping. OK, so without further ado, uh, let us start with our first slide. So basically, uh, before I enter to the topic, I will talk a bit about our background first. So who is who is Poladron? So Poladron is founded in 2016, which uh, we are focusing in RT Technologies Industry, which is across Malaysia, Thailand, and Indonesia. So basically, we will provide the enterprise solutions uh, with drones, sensor, and analytics together. So in the later part, I will talk further about what is drone sensors and analytics for the introduction of UAD. So apart from that, uh, we also are the tier one distributor for DJI Enterprise, which we distribute the uh, uh, enterprise units to suppliers and we also are the many leading payloads uh, distributors, such as uh, FLUS for the thermal imaging and Centera for the multispectral imaging. So up to date, Poladron has mapped up to 500,000 hectares of land and do the analysis for our clients. Uh, we also did sell one, uh, up to 1,000 plus units of drones to our enterprise client with the continuous support and after sales service. So not only that, we did have a sister company called Drone Academy Asia, which we have straight up to up to 500 plus participants in our academy. So uh, we will come across different industry in by our client base. So next, uh, let us start with the introductions to, to UAV. Uh, Afi, can you help me to pass to the next slide? Thank you. Yeah, so for introductions to UAV, so uh, what is UAV? So many of you might not familiar with the term of uh, UAV. So UAV is meant for unmanned aerial vehicles, which is a type of aircraft that operates without human pilot on board. So normally we call it as a drone. So UAV is the official name or the correct name which is used by the militaries or the public or media already commonly used it as a drone. So when we're talking about UAV, we can talk, uh, we can refer it to drones as well. So uh, by having a complete uh, UAS solution, unmanned aerial system solutions, we need to have a four four part of components. So if you guys uh, can think of uh, have a guess, first uh, we're gonna have our platform. 
So what is platform? So platform actually uh, we are referring to the drone itself. So drone itself will be as the objects for us to fly to the sky. Then after that, uh, we're gonna have second components which we call payload. So payloads can be many types. So I will explain in the later part as well in my slide. Yeah. So payload normally here, uh, we are referring to the cameras. Then after that, for the third component, next, uh, we will having the software. So the software is very important that to help us to analyze the data. So by having these three components, and the last one will be the operators uh, in, in our UIS solutions. So we just, the platform itself, it cannot be do for the analysis because it, by having the platform or the drone itself, it only can take it as a toy. So if without any function to help you to capture or acquisit any data. So to have a complete solution, you need to have three elements together, including the platform, payload, software, and also the operator as well. So these are the components that we must to have to make a complete UIS solution. So now uh, let us talk further in. What is platform? So there are three types of uh, common uh, platforms that are uh, using in the market. So the first type will be the fixed wing. So fixed wing uh, will be, normally we take it as something like the aeroplane. So when, when, we, when we're using the fixed wing, we need to have a long runway for it to take off and landing. But uh, the fixed wing can be due for the long range uh, missions and it's, it's more durable. So normally for the fixed wing, uh, we didn't take it, uh, we didn't use it in the area that they have an accessibility issue because uh, by using it, you need to have a very long runway to fly it. Then a uh, second part of, uh, second second type of a platform will be multi roto So multi roto is the normal drone that we can see. So it's very easy to take off and it can have a very precise control. So it's something like a helicopter we can we can imagine as it's very easy to take off in anywhere and also can have a very precise control. So uh, but the 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 cons part is that uh, by using the multi rotors we have a limited uh, limited battery usage because it will normally it will run around up to 20 to 30, 30 minutes is the maximum. So to solve the issues, the market has come up with the hybrid versions. Uh, big combination between the fixed wing and multi rotor, what we call VTOR, vertical takeoff and landing. So, VTOR is a combination of both fixed wing and multi rotor. So, what it means is that it can take off uh, like multi rotor, it's very easy to take off and fly like, a, fly like a fixed wing. So, at the same time, it can take off at, at the very uh, high, high accessibility of the place, like the forest tree or something like the plantation area. And it can fly like uh, aeroplanes, like the fixed wings, with the long range, with a longer range, and also with a longer time. So by using the VTO, then we can solve a lot of problems. So these are the type of the platforms. So next, uh, we're gonna talk about the payloads. So for the payloads, uh, normally we will differentiate in a few types. So uh, the first type will be the camera sensors. So camera sensor normally we have the RGB, which we referring to the red, green, blue camera. So these are the cameras, something like uh, we capture our picture in our phone with the normal normal imaging. Then for the another type of uh, camera sensor, we have the thermal, high zoom, and also multi-spectral. So these are using in a different industry. Thermal will be using in uh, like solar solar plant industry. High zoom will be using for inspection purpose, and multi-spectral will be using in the plantations to monitor for the crop health. Then we also have like other payloads, the like LiDAR, gas detector, supply box, and also alarm and loudspeaker, also fit for different industry. So next, uh, the third part, we're gonna talk about the software. So basically software, we have a uh, three, three part of it. Uh, we have uh, three types, which is including operations, processing, and analyzing. So just make it very simple. So to fly the drones, you need to have uh, operation software such as the VZI 4.0 or DJI Pilot to fly your drones. Then after flying your drones uh, and capturing the data, so you need to arrange the data and also stitch it to become a bigger and HD picture. So by doing that, you need to have the processing software, which is in the second part. So the second part, we, we have some uh, example of software like Pix4D, 
or DJI Terra or Nova Tel to help you to arrange the data and stitch it into a HD picture. So after having the, the processing part, then the third part will be the analyzing part. So analyzing part is that help you to extracting the data out, such as the tree counting, uh, topography information, and some of the land information of your land itself. So by using the analyzing tools uh, or the software, we did have our AGIS or few agents or AutoCAD. So these are the three parts of the software you need to have to make it a complete uh, solutions for your clients or for your company itself. So after talking about the three parts of the things, so now we can see uh, the drone revitalization Drones is revitalized a uh, different core industry, including the public safety, construction infrastructures, agricultures, and also uh, the media sectors. So today uh, we'll be focused in the area of precise surveys and also error mapping by using drone. So next, yeah. So basically today uh, we're gonna talk about the utilizations of drones in the drone in, uh, in the survey industry. So uh, according to the drone deployed research in 2019, so actually we can say, uh, we can saw that is an increase of 171% of the usage drone have been increased in the survey industry. So they have been recognized one of the faster growing commercial adopter in the survey industry. So we must wonder why uh, why so many people are using drones in their survey industry? So next, we're going to talk about uh, why they're using it in their industry. So uh, what is the drone survey? So basically, uh, do we have a basic understanding? So we understand first what is drone survey. So by using the drone for survey, it's helped to capture the aerial data with the sensor such as the RGB sensor, multi-spectral cameras or LiDAR uh, payloads. So by having the, the photo with different angles and also with the coordinate itself, we're able to help to using the photos or the data to generate for auto mosaic files, such as the 2D model or 2D model. Or furthermore, we can generate for the uh, digital terrain model or digital surface model. So we, by using the drone survey, it will be more faster and less expensive for the surveyor. So by, by using the drone, what is what will be the benefit? So first, by using the drones, it can help to reduce the fuel times because at, at this moment, by using the traditional method, by having the rovers to to the top stations to run around and get the information, we'll be using up a lot of times. However, by using the drone can help you to save a lot of time by running around. Then the second part will be reduce the survey cost. Uh, due to the shorter of times uh, you're using in the field, so the manpower will be lesser and also the, the cost for you to pay for the manpower, the labor cost will be reduced as well. So definitely we can reduce the survey cost. And also by using up to certain uh, grades, like uh, RT grade grades of the drones, it can help you to provide up to centimeter level of accuracy and exhaustive data. So apart from that, uh, many survey industry that they're also facing the issue that they unable to access to the certain area, such as like a forestry, which is uh, inaccessible for them. So basically they will use the drone as an alternative for them to fly the drones and also to capture the data. So definitely drones can help them to go into an inaccessible area and also capture the data with effective way. So these are the four benefits that you can get in the drone survey. And then the next, the next slide we're gonna uh, what are the drones? What are drones are used in for survey? So normally for the drones can be using in survey area is that uh, that we can use for land surveying. And then uh, second part that we use for land management and development. So basically survey will be using it for the land surveying by collecting the data. And also some of the developer will be using the drones for their land management and also development planning which is in the pre-planning stage. And then next, uh, second part, uh, we also can use the drone for stockpile measurement. So this is very crucial in some of the mining, mining industry or mining sector. They will be using the drone to use for stockpile measurements. 
and also it can use the data to generate for the slope and slope analysis as well. So by using by having the slope analysis, then the surveyor able to do for further uh, planning as well. So apart from that, the most important part for some of the town planners or the or the management bandaran, they're able to use it for urban planning. So basically, by using the the drones, able to help you to plan a lot in the planning stage because it can help you to generate the overview of the map. So basically, all the topography informations will be have with the survey itself with a shorter type period at a and at a lesser cost. So these are the few uh, samples or of or the sector that able to use in the surveying uh, by having the drones itself. So, uh, so by using the drone also we, we can what kind of uh, expectations or the deliverables we can expect from the drone itself is that uh, there are a few samples that we can put up in here that we able to use the drone for is that we can help to get the vacant land information, the desertion map as well and also the digital surface model. And then the next slide, we're also able to get the information such as the digital terrain model and also digital elevation model. So all of this information can get after we're using our drones to capture the data from, from the lab. So uh, the next slide, we're gonna talk further in about the applications for survey and mapping. So first, uh, let us go through the what is the challenges first. So after talking about the survey industry for using the drones, so basically uh, we we already know what kind of uh, what what drone can be used on and also what is the benefit. Then now we let's look at the common challenges by the survey mapping. So basically in the survey mapping industry, the communications part is very important, but uh, it's always ha happened that uh, communication part, there's a lack of communication between the uh, workers itself because they don't have uh, uh, data to refer on. So it will have a, have a challenges for them for the, in the communication part. Then for the second part is about the accuracy. So by using some of the generation methods, the accuracy might not be there. And also it will cause a lot of uh, losses and also damage to the building as well when they're doing the survey jobs. And then the third part we'll be talking about the safety. So as we know just now, uh, construction area is very dangerous. And when you're doing the survey, uh, it might cause the risk to you that we might go into the danger. So safety part also very important that when they're doing the survey. And also by using the current methods, survey, survey uh, methods, it will be very time consuming because you need to uh, collect the data by staying that in the area up to like one to two weeks times just to get the accurate data. So it's very time consuming for you. And then on and also just now we mentioned earlier that uh, some of the area is inaccessible when you want to do the survey. So definitely by using the traditional method, you have no no any other alternative to go into the area. So that's why here uh, we have introduced drones as an alternative for the survey and mapping industry. So let us uh, talk further in details what kind of uh, benefit we can get from here. So uh, first, I'm going to do some comparison between the ground-based survey and also the drone-based survey. So in here, in a very summary that I will conclude that is by using the ground-based survey, we will take longer times compared to the drone-based survey. So as you see in the pictures that actually by using the drone based survey, you just need to take up to one to four days to complete the jobs. However, for the ground based survey, uh, you need to take up two to three weeks. So this will be the major difference of, of the ground based survey and also the drone based survey. So the time uh, when the time is shortest, definitely the cost can be saved a lot from it. And also by using the drone based survey, you can get a better overview of the map as well. So this is some of the comparison of it between the ground-based survey and also drone-based survey. So now uh, we will gonna look further into it. Uh, what are the methods of creating a survey grab, grab map? So there are two uh, two types. So first we'll be using the conven conventional drones, which is using the GCP point. 
and then the second type will be using the RTK drones. So there are two drones we'll be using here. So uh, by using the RTK drones, then we can do it for real-time kinetics, RTK method, or do it for the PPCAT method, which is post-processing uh, kinematics. So these are the two ways uh, that we're able to help to create the survey grid of the map. So you guys might wonder that what is GCP? So talking about GCP, let me explain further about it uh, in the next slide. So GCP, uh, GCP is the vision marker that actually we, when the surveyor, they want to do a survey job, they will mark it on the ground. Uh, then after that, for the GCP, the benefit of it is help to increase the accuracy of your drone survey. So it will help you to allow to fit in the models in the geodetic coordinate system. So this point must be measured by a land surveyor by using their very professional equipment, like such as the RTK, GPS or a total station. So in in a in a layman term, uh, GCP it help you to fix between two data, so that your accuracy of your data will be will be generated with the high accuracy result. So as you see in the picture here, by fixing the GCP point in the map itself, you can able to fix the two points uh two two layer of the of the map together then. By using this way, then you can get a high accuracy of data. So this is the GCP function. And then uh, talking about the pros and cons of it. So the pro, uh, the benefit of it definitely can help to generate the uh, improve the global accuracy of the drone itself. But however, the uh, this this advantages of it is the preparation work is very time consuming, and also. It will be very difficult to set up when you're working on a huge area without an uneven land. So uh, let's say we are talking about the forest. You want to set up the GCP is very hard because it's inaccessible, and also uh, the, with the forest, it might have a lot of hills uh, or the hilly place it unable to reach. So you are unable to set up the GCP at the moment. So this will be the pro and cons. So next, uh, we're gonna talk about is the real-time kinetic. So what is real-time kinetic? So basically, uh, real-time kinetic is a technique that used to increase the accuracy of the GPS by using a fixed base station, as we see in the pictures. There's a base station there. So the base station will send out the corrections to the rover. So the rover here will be referring to our our drone itself. So basically. When we're flying the drone, uh, flying the drone to collecting the data. So at the same time, our base station will send the real-time corrections to our rover itself. So at the same time, we can we can correct our data at the real time. So this is the uh, in the layman term to explain what is uh, RTK. So by using the RTK method, it we are to achieve up to centimeter centimeter level of accuracy. So that's why a lot of people uh, will prefer using the RTK method. And then uh, talking about the, the next slide, talking about the pro and cons uh, for RTK methods that uh, definitely the advantages is able to provide the uh, centimeter level of accuracy. And also the most important part can help you to reduce the GCP uh, needed. So uh, it doesn't uh, mean that you doesn't need to place any GCP but it can help you to reduce the GCP. As we know, by setting up the GCP point is very expensive. So by using the RTK method, it can help you to reduce the GCP to the minimum requirement. Uh, so talking about the, this one, this advantages. So uh, by using the RTK, so definitely you need to have a dictionary of the base station to place there. And also there will be have a risk that uh, you have a signal block between your base station and your rover together. And also, if you have a higher chance of facing the malfunctions uh, by using the RTK method between your base station and also your rover together. So this uh, will be the pros and cons by using the RTK method. So in the next slide, uh, we will talk about the PPK method. So what is PPK method? So PPK method are referring to uh, post-processing kinematic. So actually, it's, it is an alternative technique to the RTK method. 
So with a uh, PPK method, you doesn't uh, the real time corrections it doesn't happen in the real time. I uh, mean the corrections it doesn't happen in the real times because uh, by using the post processing, what you need to do is you after the collected data, then after go back to the office, then you only be doing uh, you'll be only doing the uh, corrections uh, workflow. So means that when you are in the field, it doesn't need to have the real time corrections and also the link between the rover and also the base station in the first step. So go into the second step when you go back to in the office. Then only you process the data from the base station itself and also the rover. So uh, what will be the pro and cons of it is that uh, by using the PPK method in the next slide. Mm, yep. So basically by using the PPK method, you can offer the highest accuracy of it, uh, can up to centimeter level, and also it can cover for the larger areas uh, when you doing the survey in the larger area. So because it doesn't require to place in the GCP. And also it have more uh, flexibility due to uh, it doesn't need to have a direct link between the base station and also the railway itself. However, the disadvantageous part is that you need to have someone is very talented or they know their uh, PPK process very well to process all the data from the base station and also the railway itself. So this will be the disadvantages part, and also you need to have a power workstations to process it. So uh, this will be all the all three parts of the uh, GCP, PP, uh, RTK, and also PPK method. So uh, after talking about using this method, you guys must be wonder what kind of drone able for uh, able to use in the survey industry, and also what will be the most suitable drone we can use it. So definitely uh, in here, we'll be proposing the Phantom 4 RTK plus the RTK 2 base station. So Phantom 4 RTK, so Phantom 4 RTK is the uh, latest uh, versions from Phantom 4. So it's a it's a enterprise version for Phantom 4 itself. So what we uh, different from the Phantom 4 itself is that is for this version, they come with the RTK module and also that plus in with the DRTK base station, we able to help you to do the drone survey up to centimeter level of accuracy. So next, let us see uh, some of the uh, spec of the Phantom 4 RTK. So uh, Phantom 4 RTK is up to the survey grade of level accuracy. And for the flight time itself, it can fly up to 35 minutes. And for the uh, cameras, it can shoot up to 20 megapixels and also still within with the mechanical shutter, which is more favorable with all the surveyors uh, when they're doing mapping. So it's uh, very suitable for the smaller scale project which is less than 10 hectare because you doesn't need to set up uh, so much of the GCP point. So the coverage of the flight, it can up to 40 to 60 hectare per flight and per day you can cover up to 300 to 400 hectare. So this will be some of the spec of it. So let us talk further in about the, the uh, spec for the Phantom 4 RTK. So in this version, they have based in the R new RTK module. So basically it's directly integrated to the Phantom 4 RTK. So this RTK module is a built-in. So it's not an extension. So when you bought the model, it's already in the RTK itself. So what RTK does is that it can help you to provide the real time and also centimeter level of accuracy. And also, uh, they come with the GNNS uh, redundant system, uh, global navigation satellite system. So this able to help you to uh, connect with the entry and also by using the 4G dongle or Wi-Fi hotspot. And uh, this will be able to help you to maintain the flexibility as well, even in the signal poor region such as the density. So this will be the position system introduced by the Phantom 4 RTK. And also for the position system that it can help you to achieve the, the accuracy up to one centimeter in the horizontal way. And under the vertical, it can help you to achieve up to 1.5 centimeter level, which is under the best conditions. And for the camera itself, uh, it, it remains as the same as a previous 
Quantum for Pro version 2, uh, which comes with a 1 inch of CMOS sensor and also 20 megapixels of effective pixels, and they're using back the same mechanical shutter. And then the another part of the uh, Phantom 4 RTK that I have built in with the Time Sync module. So why is Time Sync? So Time Sync able to help you to align your flight controllers, camera, and RTK module continuously. So basically, in next they're able to help you to fix the position data to the center of CMOS sensor, which means that for the every pictures you capture, they're able to help you to to fix and also correct uh, with the positioning data. So this will be the tracing functions that's used by the vendor for RTK. So as we know, it already come with the DRTK mobile station as well. Mm -hmm. So DRTK's uh, mobile station can be used for the satellite uh, compared with the GPS, GLONASS, Beidou and Galileo. And also it can uh, connect up to five remote controller together and support for the multiple DJI aircraft model as well, not only for Phantom 4 RTK. So this will be a glance through of the Phantom 4 RTK uh, specs. Then um, by using the Phantom 4 RTK, so what kind of mapping solution we are expecting? So in the next slide, uh, we can see that there are three solutions that have been concluded by our teams that can be used for Phantom 4 RTK. So basically, uh, next in the first solution, uh, we will be connecting the Phantom 4 RTK to my and uh, my net RTK, my net RTK service with the entry account. So basically, uh, by using uh, my my net RTK is offered by the Japan. So by connecting the Phantom 4 RTK with the entry uh, my net RTK, you need to have the entry account first. So for the benefit of it, uh, by using this method is that is very easy to operate because you doesn't need to have a ground stations and also uh, at the same time you also can provide up to centimeter level of uh, data to your team as well but for the disadvantages part is that you need to register for the account and uh, entry account which uh, and also you need to have a 3g or 4g connectivity when you connect to the net rtk so this will be the first solutions you need to connect to the net RTK. Then second college uh, second solutions that is you use it Phantom for RTK with the RTK two mobile stations. So by using this method, uh, you have a direct link between the, the RTK two with the Phantom for RTK. So you can operate without the 4G or the Wi-Fi itself. And at the same time, you still can get a centimeter, centimeter level of accuracy. But uh, the, uh, the disadvantages part is that is you need to have an additional setup process for the DRTK2 for the mobile stations. So this is just the additional step for the setup when you're using this method. And the operation range, uh, the, in the maximum, you can connect up to 5 kilometers. But in uh, real operations, normally the maximum you can connect is 2 to 3 kilometers due to the uh, signal disturbance in the city as well. So this will be the second solution. And then the third solution uh, will be talking about using PPK method, post-process kinematic. So basically by using this method, you need to have a phantom for RTKs or third-party RTK base stations. And then you're using it for the PPK uh, corrections. So by using this method, definitely you can generate with a high positioning, uh, high positioning accuracy. Uh, at the same time, it doesn't require a direct connection between your Phantom 4 RTK and also the base station. So these are the benefits of it. However, by setting up this, it's very complex and also uh, you require for a PPK solution and software, uh, software and method as well. So definitely you need to have someone who is very familiar with these uh, PPK uh, solutions. Then only you can go for this option. So these are the three three uh, solutions that can be using Phantom 4 with to do for your survey job. So in more details, perhaps in the later one, uh, we can discuss further in. So uh, there are some case study that actually provide by DJI. So basically uh, we have go through this case study that um, by the Stratabax. So Stratabax is a company that they help you to help the helps to do the urban highways uh, in in this 
operations that have used Phantom 4 RTK with the DRTK base station. So by using the Phantom 4 RTK base station, they're able to help them to construct with a very precise 3 d mapping and up to 80,000 80, of the, uh, kilometers of the highways uh, they can able to map out by using the Phantom 4 RTK and also plus with the DRTK mobile station. So by using the drones itself, actually is make their construction survey surveying uh, workflow is more quicker and more efficient because it doesn't need to use back the old method which is using the total station and place one by one and also that will require a bit of longer time so this one is the case study uh, happened in germany uh, provided by DJI itself and then uh, and also our team have to do a little bit task in the next case study which uh, we have uh, we're trying to look for the accuracy measurements comparing uh, by using the Phantom for RTK and also Phantom for Pro uh, normal versions. So the objective is help to provide the horizontal and elevation accuracy of Phantom for RTK against the GPS capture method. So which uh, we using the GPS capture method is using on the Phantom for RTK. So and also the objective is help to determine whether the Phantom for RTK can achieve up to the accuracy requirements of our projects. So in uh, next in this in this uh, case study, we will be using two drones, which is Phantom 4 Pro and also Phantom 4 RTK. So the traditional base GPS measurement uh, accuracy errors is up to two to five meters, and also the traditional high accuracy so method require a high no higher number of uh, GCP points, and also the process is longer. So this is some of the background. And then the, both of the camera is the same, is using the uh, 20 megapixel. And then the deliverables are uh, at this case study we will, uh, will be processed for the auto maps and also the DSM map. And the methodology behind that uh, we have set up to six control points on the test side and also uh, using measure the control points by using the triple RSLT with minor RTK to identify the light, long, and elevation of the each point. So for the data acquisition method, in, uh, there are three. So the first one, we're using MyNet my RTK uh, by using the Fender for RTK, which provided by UPEC. The accuracy is around uh, up to two centimeter levels. And then for the PPK, we're also using the Fender for RTK. Uh, we're using the Japan Station, PPM. <laughs> And then for the GPS methods, we are using Phantom 4 Pro, which the standard GPS accuracy is up to 2 to 5 meter. So in this, uh, in this data uh, collections, next, uh, we can see that when we're using Phantom 4 Pro with uh, 3 GCP and comparing with the Phantom 4 RTK with 1 GCP, actually we can get almost the same result uh, when we comparing with uh, 3 GCP and 1 GCP. So it means that by uh, using the Phantom 4 RTK on, only with 1 GCP, we are also able to achieve the accuracy uh, when we using the 3 GCP. So it means that in here we can reduce the GCP while we using the Phantom 4 RTK. So by comparing the uh, error XYZ elevations. So uh, we have mixed a little bit of a conclusions in our case study that is um, if the elevation accuracy is not desired uh, by using the Phantom 4 RTK without the GCP is acceptable in this uh, case study and also PPK still will be a recommended method for the best accuracy if uh, instant result is not necessary so uh, and also the third one is that we found that by insert with one GCP point able to help us to reduce the elevation error below to 6 cm. So means that uh, after insert with uh, one GCP of data, they're able to help to reduce the error. And then uh, for one, um, by using the GCP checkpoints, uh, we still prefer one to three GCP still recommended, although you're using the Phantom for RTK to ensure the accuracy and provide the accountability for any measurements. So in overall, uh, Fender 4 RTK method can be used by one GCP and then 
compare with the traditional method Fender 4 Pro, we, we need more GCP when we're doing the survey job. So Fender 4 Arcade can help you to reduce the GCP point setup in this case study. So uh, after this, uh, our conclusion ends. Uh, so we will go into our portfolio. So, so what kind of service you have offered in Poadron does is where offer in uh, four parts. So uh, we're able, uh, first we're gonna talk about the turnkey project. So basically turnkey project is that we're able to help you to do from A to Z of the project. If let's say you doesn't have, you don't have any pilots or any drones or any software to help you to process the data. So you can pass to us, we can help you to do A to Z. So at the same time, we also can able to help you train your staff uh, and also if let's say you want to set up pilot teams, we are able to help you train them up. And uh, in the same time, sometimes of the clients, they will look for the drones when after they train their staff up, they need to have a drone to, to execute their mission. So that's why now uh, we are able to come in to help you to source for your product and also suggest you with the right product that able to complete your operations. So uh, in the fourth part, we do research and development. So uh, when doing research and developments is that when our clients uh, with the current technologies that are unable to help them to solve the issues, that's why we come in to do the research and development together with our clients, such as uh, we, have, we have come up with our products called Oritus, which is able to help the oil pumps or owners to solve, uh, to come with uh, alternative solutions by using our drones uh, Oritus for the spraying jobs to uh, monitor and also to to solve for the issue of RB disease. So these are the four parts of the service we offer in here. Then next, uh, we also have a web JS, uh, web based JS uh, software called IRAMAP. So what is IRAMAP? Uh, IRAMAP is very simple. So basically it's a platform to help you to process and analyze data. So as we know by 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 buying a new software to do processing and also the analysis is very expensive. So that's why we offer with the Aeromax, this online cloud platforms. So everything will be online. So you can just uh, put in your data into our platform. Then in the platform itself, it's able to help you to generate, uh, to process and also analysis the data you want. So including like trade counting, TSM, TTM data. So this is the web account platform and also uh, it doesn't come with a subscription base. It only is a pay per use base. So only uh, if let's say you are looking for 10 hectare basis of your processing. So you just pay for 10 hectare uh, processing money. So it doesn't need to pay for the whole year subscription. So this will be the difference between us and also other software. And then uh, in the next slide, uh, these are the data that we're able to process and also uh, analyze for our clients. And also it can be done inside the RM map itself. So including the current land digitization map, DSM, DTM, and also the DM model. And there are more uh, coming up with the new features in our RM map. So feel free to drop by to our RM map to have a look. So then uh, the next one, uh, as I mentioned just now in the earlier parts, we have a sister company called Drone Academy Asia. So they did offer with the course that called Area Mapping and Survey. So in the course itself, they will come across with uh, different industry applications. In next, uh, it will including constructions, land developments, agriculture, money, and environment study. So by having uh, by by joining this course, we're able to use it in this five industry and maybe more and then uh, basically uh, what you'll be learning is about like basic control of the drone itself and also some of the drone surveying process and technique and there are more uh, will be introducing in the course itself so let's say you're interested with the area mapping and surveying course uh, you also can contact us then we will lead you to to the right person to talk with from drone academy Asia's. And then uh, talking about our experience in the last, uh, so up to that, we have met 500,000 hectares of 
uh, the land and also process data for clients. So mostly it's in Malaysia and others will be in Indonesia and Thailand. So uh, our major focus still in plantations, which is we do a lot of research and study in plantation and also solve a lot of uh, server mapping clients in plantation as well, which we process and analysis data for their uh, plantation usage. So this will be uh, the overall of our experience. So uh, the last part will be the uh, contact number for us, uh, including the emails and also the phone number you can call in or WhatsApp in to, to ask for further uh, inquiries. So before I end my slide, perhaps uh, do we have any question from Afik's side that we can answer or uh, so? Mm. Yep. Uh, thank you, Jayang. Mm. So uh, I think we do have a lot of questions uh, from our audience. So I think uh, we take a few of these and answer it. So first of all, someone has asked, um, what is the meaning of uh, CM accuracy? Uh, does that mean that accuracy is between plus minus 90 and CM or how is it? So uh, the CM accuracy means that uh, when we're using the drone survey for uh, for for the survey and mapping purpose, so the accuracy can up to one to five cm accuracy by using the method just now introduced, using the base station and also RTK method and also PPK method. So the cm accuracy level can be achieved. So cm accuracy is like actually it's plus minus. Normally it's plus minus. Uh, yeah. the discrepancy one to five cm. Under the best uh, mm. So uh, the next one is uh, someone says, Ren, uh, if we already have the station, why not? Why don't we use the real time connection? Uh, what are the pros and cons? Mm. Please, uh, sorry, again, the, the questions. So uh, he has asked, like, if you have the station, Mm -hmm. uh, why don't we use uh, real-time connection? Uh, it means PPK and also RTK. So, yeah, oh. RTK, yeah, RTK and PPK. Why is the uh, I mean the differences in in accuracy uh, level? Yeah. Okay, okay. So I think uh, because uh, you mentioned that because when we're having the the uh, connections. Uh, means that we can connect with the Japan centers that uh, we doesn't need to have a uh, base station, right? Mm. Because uh, in some of the area that actually they have uh, no signal, mm. so basically you cannot uh, connect the Phantom for RTK drones to the base day uh, to the Japan station. So at this time, yeah, we'll be using the base stations and also the PPK, PPK, uh, PPK methods. Uh, so by using the Phantom 4 RTK base station, so you will have a direct link between the drone itself to the base stations. But however, by using the PPK method, you doesn't need to have a, a real time link. Is because that uh, you can fly in a more larger area and also cover with the larger area when you're using the PPK method, so that the link won't be broke, and also you can do the post processing corrections. Mm. So that will be the major difference that I mentioned in the slide earlier. Mm. Yeah. Um, I think uh, so. The next one is uh, Mr. Liao has asked, uh, can drone count the number of plants uh, basically, like uh, tree counting? Uh, can drones what again? Uh, do tree counting. Map. Oh, okay. Yep. So uh, to for uh, for for the understanding that. Mm, for the drones, what they've done is that uh, they will just capture the data. So basically, the drones will help only to ac uh, acquire the data. So basically, you just take, like our phone, just take all the raw photos. So by having the data itself, we need to have a software to do the further processing and analysis, which I explained in the slide. Uh, let me check. Uh, slide. Uh, slide number nine, yeah, maybe, yeah, I think can help me to slide number nine. Slide number nine, yeah. yeah, so as we see here, there are two types of software. 
So basically what drones uh, itself do in the first part is that they just to capture the photo like our phone itself. So they will capture a lot of the raw photo. So by having the raw photo, what we will do next is that we use the software to help us to stitch all the photo in a big picture or in a high HD picture. So after having the picture, then we are only able to use other software as well to do the processing, to extract the data, to, to do for like the, to extract for the topography information of the land. So by having the drone itself, it just helps you to cap, capture the picture uh, without doing the processing and analysis. So processing and analysis, you still need to have other software to help you to process and analyze. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So uh, as mentioned, um, Analyzing software is where uh, duty counting takes place, but and then Ira map that uh, Polaro and Stapler is able to do uh, AI and algorithm counting to perform tree counting. Yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah uh, I think the last one would be. Uh, one moment. I think uh, that's all for the questions actually. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yep. So if they have any further questions, they may uh, just drop an email to yep. our uh, contact emails, uh, which we mentioned the last slide, or they can contact us through our uh, WhatsApp in our WhatsApp as well. Mm. The right. Right. So. Yeah. So thank you everyone for tuning in to our webinar for today. Um, then if you have any further questions, uh, feel free to actually uh, visit our website at uh, hello at uh, sorry www.colonial.com and then if, uh, any general questions can be redirected to hello at and our phone number or WhatsApp messaging number is uh, plus is zero Malaysian country code one one two six five two nine zero and six nine. Uh, we are based in cyber Jaya, as mentioned earlier and uh, if you are interested in any of our services any of our products and solutions you can uh, go to uh, www.colonel.com um, that's it for today I hope you guys are under uh, you guys now understand and get a case of what uh, area drone survey and mapping is and uh, thank you for tuning in today uh, i hope you guys are staying safe and well uh, have a nice day thank you thank you